Good day! I'm Joni DeFeldes from the Ateneo de Manila University, and today I'll be presenting about CRISPR-Cas9, a new way to edit DNA that may speed the advance of genetic engineering. CRISPR-Cas9 is a gene editing technique native to the bacteria that can target and modify DNA with groundbreaking accuracy. Invention of the said technique, which received more than 300 mentions in research publications just in the first quarter of this year, is currently disputed between two groups of researchers, with one being led by Jennifer Dudna of UC Berkeley, while the other being led by Feng Zhang of the Broad Institute and MIT. Here's how CRISPR-Cas9 works in bacteria. When bacteria encounters an invading source of DNA, such as from a virus, they can copy and incorporate segments of the foreign DNA into their genome as spacers between the short DNA repeats in CRISPR. These spacers enhance the bacteria's immune response by providing a template for RNA molecules to quickly identify and target some of the DNA sequence in the event of future viral infections. If the RNA molecules recognize an incoming sequence of the foreign DNA, they guide the CRISPR's complex to that sequence. There, the bacteria's Cas proteins, which are specialized for cutting DNA, splice and disable the invading gene. In the fall of 2012, a team of researchers led by UC Berkeley scientist Jennifer Dudna announced that they had hijacked the bacteria's CRISPR-Cas immune system to create a new gene editing tool. The CRISPR-Cas9 system involves CRISPR, a Cas protein called Cas9, and hybrid RNA shown in the figure, to be programmed to identify, cut, and even replace any gene sequence. By the start of 2013, research applying CRISPR-Cas9 to genetic engineering was underway. CRISPR's main advantage over its gene-editing predecessors, zinc finger nucleases and talons, is that it is extremely easy to use. Zinc finger nucleases and talons both require that scientists create custom proteins for each DNA target, a process that requires much more effort than the painless RNA programming required for CRISPR. CRISPR can also be used in seemingly any type of cell. Researchers have reported success using CRISPR-Cas9 in animal embryos, including those of mice, frogs, and monkeys as well as human stem and immune cells. Because it is so simple and easy to use, CRISPR has generated huge excitement in the worlds of molecular biology, medical research, commercial biotechnology, and gene therapy, where it may make it possible to make changes with profound consequences. To date, gene therapies have been designed to fix everyday sort of cells such as those of the blood, or the retina, or the pancreas. CRISPR makes it possible to think about aiming at the special types of cells that make sperm and eggs, or the genome of a fertilized embryo awaiting implantation at the womb. In either case, the changes made would pass from one generation to the next and the one after that in perpetuity. And as mentioned in the earlier slide, one of CRISPR's great attractions is that it can be used to introduce or remove a number of different genes at a time. Most disorders are not caused by just one gene going wrong. Being able to manipulate many different genes in a cell line, plant, or animal opens new avenues for the study of conditions such as diabetes, heart disease, and autism where a number of genes are involved, along with the environment. In the past, a mouse with as few as three genes knocked out would have taken as many years to create. Now it can be done in weeks. Three weeks. Further, there has been a flurry of commercial activity and investment. Large pharmaceutical companies are eyeing the technology for research. For example, AstraZeneca has plans to use it in cell cultures to explore the function of every gene in the human genome. Among the startups, Caribou, which was founded by Dr. Dudna in 2011, has raised $11 million in funding and will focus on cell engineering for their drug screening, agricultural, and industrial biotechnology. CRISPR Therapeutics, co-founded by Dr. Charpentier in Switzerland, which has raised $25 million, is aiming at a similar market, as is Editas Medicine, co-founded by Dr. Zhang. In early August, Editas raised $120 million from a group of investors that included Bill Gates. This comes on top of the $43 million the company raised in 2013. In the Philippines, products and techniques develop through this technology may also prove massive applications in our country's agriculture and healthcare problems proving more sustainable and resilient crops and more affordable treatments for various genetic diseases respectively. 